and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Abzan Knights here in Standard. That's right, we got another donation deck here. This is a, a list that we played uh, one very similar a few weeks ago. We're bringing it back with a, a couple of changes. But um, I like what we got going on here. So this is um, our Knight package with Worthy Knight, Acclaimed Contender, Midnight Reaper, Murderous Rider. Those are all really, really good knights. <clears throat> and then we're kind of supplementing those with green because green not only gives us like a mana creature to start the game off with, with Paradise Druid, which is, you know, a really strong card, but we get a great knight with Knight of Autumn. And then we also get a good Planeswalker with the Golgari Queen, another mid-range creature with Questing Beast, some, some uh, card advantage with the Great Henge. Um, the Great Henge is, an, is a good card to play with Acclaimed Contender because, you know, Acclaimed Contender, you can grab Legendary Artifacts, so we can grab the Great Henge with that. Uh, we also have Cavalier of Night at the top end being another good knight there. Just a lot of cool synergies with this deck, a lot of uh, good value creatures. Ways to, bring, ways to bring the creatures back with Order of Midnight, Soren, Cavalier of Night. And then card advantage with Acclaimed Contender, Midnight Reaper, Vraska, Great Henge. A good little mid-range deck here. Um, we got good interaction for um, artifacts and enchantments too, which is key and standard with Knight of Autumn. And then, you know, we have stuff for Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven with like Kaya. Some other good removal. Blacklands Paragons over here on our sideboard for like the green matchups. Like if we play against Questing Beast decks, we can bring in Blacklands Paragon that can block Questing Beast. Um, it's a good removal spell there. So let's give this a try. So we're going to be playing this through a league. We're going to play until we win five or lose two. Whatever happens first. Yeah, Deathless Knight could be good. I could see playing Deathless Knight instead of Questing Beast, maybe. I mean, I guess we'd have to have more ways to really gain life. We're looking at like Vraska, Soren, and the Great Henge as our only ways. I guess Cav... Lifelink, Cavalier, or Murderous Rider. So we got some ways. Yeah, we are in the colors of Despark if we need Despark. Which I could see us playing Despark instead of Noxious Grasp. Um, yeah, there's two Noxious Grasp in the sideboard. I, I would kind of be more comfortable with those as Desparks for the Jeskai Fires matchup. Uh, Matthew, you think we should do a Circle of Loyalty in here? I could see that. Circle of Loyalty is pretty cool. It's definitely really good if we can go wide with Worthy Knight and everything. It helps the games that you that you're able to like put out a bunch of creatures, but the games that they're like interacting with you and killing your creatures, the Circle of Loyalty is not doing a ton. What's the weakest matchup for this deck? Probably, probably Simic Ramp. They can go over the top of it. Or, like, Teamer Adventures probably can outgrind it. Probably those kind of decks. The other, like, mid range decks that go really big. Wow. That's kind of unfortunate. Finding five cards, so that means that... Uh, finding five cards like that, because that means that we're going to now just draw lands. Probably. I mean, no, like we, this deck has a ton of card advantage as far as the control matchup goes. I'm, I wouldn't be as worried about a control matchup. You know, this is a good attack.
Ooh. Attack. I don't really see like the whole point of putting the counters on this one. It's just going to be trading with Frilled Mystic almost, almost assuredly. Could be wrong with that though. I guess it could have traded with a night pack ambusher. Hmm. Maybe I should have just put the counters on it. Yay. All right, I probably should have just put the counters on it. Only two cards. Hmm. Interesting, that resolved. They just looked so certain that they wanted to cast something that, you know, basically Night Pack Ambusher, I wanted to have another Murderous Rider for it. Now I'm just wasting four mana, though. Attack. I honestly should have attacked the previous turn, too. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a, a T five T five. A. That's what it looks like. Ideally, we'll draw land here. That'd be the best. We draw land. Kill both their creatures. <clears throat> Attack in for a bunch. Like, is this worth it to kill both their creatures? It probably is, right? If I would have given the counters to Knight of Autumn, I, won't forgive this. I would have had lethal.
right, so against Simic Flash, Noxious Grasp, of course. Obviously, Ceratops, too. Um, that's kind of a lot of cards. I guess Golgari Queen and Knight of Autumn would take those out, but... I kind of like the rest of these. Maybe... Maybe I don't play Beast with playing Ceratops. I don't know if we'll ever be able to resolve the Great Henge. But if we would, that'd be awesome. Uh, we may be getting a little bit of a buffer from... May need a refresh, may get a little bit of a buffer because of the last video that I'm uploading. <laughs> Fish Oracle. Well, basically keeping this because we have the two Ceratops and I really like Murderous Rider, but... This could be a little rough. No, it should be done uploading now, so should be good now. But you may have had like a little thing a little bit ago. So I'm going to crack the Fable Passage first. The reason why I'm doing that is so that if we have a spell that we scry to the bottom this next turn, it's not going to be, we're not going to shuffle it back and then have a chance of redrawing it. It's going down to the bottom and we have better chances of drawing lands. But this is obviously the worst case scenario. Our first two cards are both spell spell. Um, no, Dizzy, I think, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, um, the question is with Absan Hero, was it a pet deck, or were you thinking it would do better? Um, I mean, I think it did, like, as, as good as, like, what to expect, basically. I think it did just fine. Um, I was... You know, like, we beat the two aggro matchups, and I was hoping that we are going to play against, you know, more aggro and more... Uh, more, like, um, Witches Oven decks. But we didn't. We didn't see, like, the food decks and stuff. And, you know, we played against a couple of bigger green decks that are tough matchups that... You know, we, we played them about as well as we could, and uh, the games just didn't go our way. They were both close three game sets. They just didn't go our way. I don't think it was like the, the deck performed poorly or anything like that. Bant means blue, white, and green together. The sailor is probably going to kill me. Just drawing extra cards and everything. Come on. Can't get this fourth land for the Ceratops at all. Yeah, but the sailor is just going to kill me.
down on. Not drawn the best. All these Order of Midnights that we're never gonna play. Yeah, it's all about like if they, I mean, if they draw like ambushers and things like to block my Ceratops, I'm losing. But if they don't, you know, we can we could maybe pull this off. They don't have any green creatures. Darn. You get just like one extra haste creature in there with one extra questing beast over a midnight reaper. Yeah, it's definitely an unfortunate slow start for us on the draw that you could just never recover. It's like the same exact hand. But it's a little bit better because we're on the play. Um, one and we we actually can play a turn. We actually get to play something on turn two. The other both lands were tap lands. This one only one is, so we can play worthy knight on turn two and then midnight, midnight. And I'm just I'll just cast these out and get the extra knights and stuff. No, popper is not really a slow format. It's it's still pretty powerful. There's still a lot of good stuff to do in in popper. I don't know. I mean, I haven't played Popper in like a year, so I, I don't know what they did, if they like what they've done with the ban list or anything. But you know, I know like Delver decks are real popular, and um, you could play Tron. There's some good Green Stompy, as well as like Kiln Fiend is it decks. Yeah, you said Popper got way worse after the printing of Astrolab. I don't know how you pronounce that card. Yeah, that was... I haven't played Popper since then. I'll do that trade. Brineborn Cutthroats can be pretty scary. Can we draw that green land? We never drew a green land last game. We drew the Paradise Druid that finally cast some green spells. They're stuck on lands too, though. And we're up one to know.
I think they may have like banned Astrolab though, did they? In Popper? Hey, JG, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, so like Popper is a, a more powerful format than you would think of like a format of just commons. It's, it's actually a pretty powerful format. Okay, yeah, they did ban it afterwards. Um, question is, do I like do I like this deck better or worse than Orzov Troll Knights? I think I like Troll Knights more. I like the consistency of the mana and everything. Um, but I, I'm not necessarily not necessarily saying that that deck's definitely better than this deck. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I really like Ethereal Absolution, Black Bridge Troll. This looks like a pretty awesome hand for my opponent. I go, if I go Golgari Queen, kill the Yorvo, Pell Collector grows. We're looking at taking five. Castle's not coming. Like, this is a tap land right now, so I'd have to shock to be able to double spell. Yeah, I mean, if they curve this into Questing Beast also, it's just like... It's just pretty crazy, but yeah. One drop, double one drop, Yorvo. Into <laughs> Vivian. Yeah, it's not good. Not good for me. I want them to minus Vivian. They should definitely plus Vivian, but I want them to minus. So that's very good for me that they minus. Get em. That was my best case scenario. I have come for vengeance. Right. <laughs> Time for a Just drink. Take out Vivian now. Why wouldn't they spend the one mana to do the other Love Struck Beast first? They probably meant to do that and just misclicked, right? They probably meant to do that and misclicked. Yeah. Dang. And then Questing Beast? Yeah, I mean, this is just a... a dream... This is just a dream hand for them.
That was a good one to hit. Guava! Got a fun one for tomorrow. Awesome, what do we got? Teamer Lotus. Okay. That is a pretty fun one. It's a Teamer Lotus Field deck. That is a, that does look pretty sweet. If I kill Lovestruck Beast, that thing grows to a 5-5, five five, but this thing has Trample. Lovestruck Beast does not have Trample, and it also can't attack. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I'd love for them to minus again. Come on, you can minus. Darn. I'd get out of the way if I were you. Gotta kill this Vivian. It's just something we gotta do. I only got one more Growth Chamber Guardian to go grab. Ooh, no search. No search. I only pick targets that interest me. As long as we win, nothing else matters. Yeah, Legion's end would be nice. I don't think I have one. Why no search? So they, they have to have like the other Girl Chamber Guardian hand also. So that was that had to have been their top deck with the Great Henge. That was a good top deck. Now we need to find Knight of Autumn. Activate Castle. Sometimes sacrifice is necessary. <sighs> 
Looks like they're finally starting to draw some lands. Oh no, what is this? They still get to draw the card even if I kill the questing beast in response, right? I'm pretty sure they still draw the card. Stop. Yeah, they still do. We actually have just as many cards in our library as them. Respond. Let me respond. This won't let me respond. All right, well we're taking an extra one. We took an extra one. Night of Autumn, where are you at? Where are you at, Night of Autumn? So yeah, we're trying to go Golgari Queen Ultimate. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, that's not a good sign. This really has been an epic game, hasn't it? So many times I thought that we were, we were dead. Hey, Kidney Thief. Thanks so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Another brand new Twitch Prime sub today. Thanks, Kidney Thief. Okay. So you block you. Um, you block there. You two block there. You block there. And then I guess you have to jump. All right, looks good. Sweet. Golgari Queen Ultimate. All right, so yeah, we got some good cyborg cards here. Paragon being a good blocker for Questing Beast, of course, Kaya's Wraths, and then Noxious Grasp. Good cyborg cards. As far as what to take out, I don't know. I kind of like everything in our deck, honestly. Could just take out Paradise Druids with our plan being Kaya's Wrath. Seems fair. Um, yeah, my opponent definitely could have won that if they did not minus their first Vivian. If they would have just been taking up their Vivian, I would have been dead. But, you know, they minus. We got to kill it with that Soren. That was nice. Uh, maybe I take out Golgari Queen? Question mark? I don't know. I mean, I like all these cards. I mean, I guess we don't need all these Knight of Autumns. But I, I think we should play, like, at least two Knight of Autumns. At least. Order of Midnight kinda, is kind of a good pairing with the Kaya's Wrath. But I guess it doesn't really block. It's just basically raise dead. All right, yeah, maybe we just take out Order of Midnight. And we get some more of these Knight of Autumns back in here. We have, like, Soren to bring stuff back anyway. Because Knight of Autumn's just nice, because Knight of Autumn also trades with Questing Beast as a 4-4. Four -four. 
Yeah. We'll just take out Order of the Order of Midnight. Thanks, I Tatter. Thanks, the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, I take out uh, Great Henge sometimes. It took it out against like the counter spell heavy deck, like where it's going to be tough to resolve a, a regular spell and then also resolve Great Henge as well. I think that I, I Tatter said, "What a great game to watch." That was a really good one. Yeah, side sideboarding is one of the most difficult parts of Magic for sure. Hmm. Kill the Growth Chamber Guardian right now, and then they don't get any value from it. Hey, what's up, Mike? All right, what do they got? The beast. Would it be weird to just murderous rider a one one? That'd probably be weird, right? Just because if they have any other one one, I'm gonna feel bad about it. But it's the way that I take the least amount of damage this turn. Really want more land. Yeah, 22 creatures are probably enough to add the great engine to a deck, sure. Oh, I am going to love tearing this place to the ground. <laughs> Stomping time. All right, just down to one card. That's a great card. Tear it down. That was a great card. Watch out. They bite. Why do they always minus Vivian? What's that all about? There's extra one ones I didn't kill before. I felt pretty good when they had just the one card left in hand, but then it turned out that card was Vivian. The absolute worst card for me to see. Vivian's the the most difficult card for me to deal with from their deck for sure. 
And I had a hand there filled with removal spells for Vivian. And I still died to the second one because I had to use them on the other large green creatures. Maybe they won't curve out for a game. Nope. Alright, I need to draw black mana. Come on, black mana. Not black cards, black mana. Pulp Collector is just so strong. If I don't trade with Pulp Collector there, it's just going to grow and be a lot bigger and even more difficult to trade with. No, they they curved out really well all three games, and I I kept a sketchy one here that did not pan out. <laughs> all right, one on one. I mean that they just wasted that removal spell because you know like it was a fight like it killed their it killed their questing beast too like I don't know why they did that but oh well I'm done <laughs> yeah trade questing beast plus removal for the three drop I mean I'm still taking six there I'm still dead but yeah I don't know why they didn't fight with the five five but oh well. I was kind of assuming it was like an actual removal spell, or I was starting to concede. Man, what are these hands? What we got we got twenty six lands, no, twenty five lands. Hmm. A red bag of holding deck. This could be interesting. So we'll, like lead with questing beast. If we have another land, we could you know drop worthy knight and acclaimed contender in the same turn. We could do that right now. What do you think, Hawkeye? Is that better? Oh, you just want some food? All right, yeah, we'll go. We'll go the wide route. Um,
Certainly went the risky route. By taking a card that I need another black spell to cast. You got a bunch of drool on your face, okay? Why don't you let me clean your face? All right, what they do, fling. Claim the Flingborn. Yeah, we're going beast mode. That's our plan. <laughs> what are you doing there, silly? Oh, I should just block their 1-1 one -one with my 1-1, one -one, right? Oh, no, because I want to sack it. I don't know. Told you that's not or that drool on your face that I wanted to clean off. He's like trying to clean it off himself. Oh, beast mode's not working. I don't have the answers for beast mode. Yay, that was a good draw. Worked out very well. No, yeah, this, this isn't it. No, no. Um, we we have played bag of holding before, but um, no, I didn't have a bag of holding deck that looked like this. This is different. This is. Opponents playing in a bunch of stuff. Ninety-nine point nine percent of recruits from Castle Ardenvale immediately die in battle. It's gotta be less than that, right? It's gotta be like ninety-five percent. But yeah, people in Castle Ardenvale aren't thrilled to join the battle. Pity we couldn't have been allies. With our opponent's life total as low as it is, if they just want to take this and then swing back and kill my Vraska, I don't mind. Ooh, Ox with Bag of Holding, I guess. Yeah, that's something you could do. I'm still not like too convinced the Bag of Holding is too good. But yeah, you could... Oh, you can ox with it. And ox it up. Try not to think too hard. Hawkeye's really struggling over there. All right, what are we doing? So we're playing against some red, black, kind of sacrifice, kind of discard, kind of planeswalker, kind of everything. So I think that means we just keep it the same. 
Don't think we really need to bring anything in here. There's nothing that that really seems like I need to to change up. Lazav copying Kroxa? I mean, yeah, that's, that's definitely something that you can do. Like, that that does sound like a, a pretty... A pretty sweet scenario, and and um, not really anything that's too far-fetched. Uh, you know, it takes some time to get going and everything, but... Uh, Lazav does look more valuable... Um, right now, with the two Elder Giants, with both of them. Whether you want to put in, like, a Sultai or a Grixis Shell. Boo. All right, Guava. See you tomorrow. do it's your turn does first strike sack another creature gets plus two plus zero I'm sure this isn't like our devastation or something right just lock it I need more mana so I'm basically taking a turn off here just to to ramp up just like they Kind of took this last turn off to ramp up with the lockets. Scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for the new set? I would say an 8. I would say an 8. I I like the set. I I mean, some people, some people aren't excited about it, saying that it's not as powerful, and Shut therefore they're friends. not excited about it. But I, I like it. It looks like cards that are enjoyable to play and play against. For the most part, I'm a, the one thing I'm I am worried about ramp, and I'm worried about like that Nyx Bloom Ancient and stuff like that. <clears throat> but for the most part, looks like a good set. And I I like devotion stuff. Devotion stuff's pretty fun. All right, so we'll be able to play Sora next turn. Give all of our creatures life link. We can attack for a bunch, gain a lot of life, bring My some creatures back, have some stuff die, draw some cards. Soren kills the Tybalt. That's why we still gain a lot of life. For those of y'all now saying in chat that we're not going to be gaining life. Tybalt's dead. So I'll just attack with those. I like, yeah, I'm, I, I think there's a lot of good stuff with mono black. 
So yeah, like Model Black Devotion. I think yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, I like that. I think I like when Model Black decks are are good. I think that's a good, um, I've seen these tricks a good sign for standard. Um, Thassa, Thassa is a card that I really like just in general, like play style wise. I really like, um, there we go. Okay. I, just, I really like the, the play style of Thassa, I think, and blinking stuff. That's definitely up my alley. You foresee a Nissa ban with a new set? I mean, I guess it's pop, I guess it's possible. I don't really expect us to be. Um, I don't really expect us to see a ban for a while, but I guess that's possible. Correct. That yes, Tile Sauce. That's there's an. That's exactly what happens. If Nissa would get banned, you would keep your copies so you could play it like an historic and you would get refunded wild cards. Yep. Just too much value with all these different knights that we've had. Too much value for our opponent. tree thanks for the twitch prime sub i appreciate that uh, another brand new twitch prime sub today Just have like infinite cards. I just have infinite cards. Like Soren gets you contender, which gets you order of midnight, which gets you back contender. Which gets you something else. And the the contender also drew a card when it died because of Midnight Reaper. Okay, we're two and one. Back to the win
nine mana card. The Nyx, the Nyx Blue Mage in is seven mana. The triples everything. It costs seven. Keep. Yeah, so it's yeah, three mana druid, yeah, playing yeah, getting those extra land drops. Yeah, three mana druid can be pretty scary. Alright, we're gonna speaking of land drops, we could use some. Some block in. Just playing an order of midnight out last turn isn't <clears throat> isn't getting a lot done for us. Play anything that turn. But sideboard, looks like we don't have time for Order of Midnight. <laughs> looks like that card's not necessary against their Lava Coil heavy deck. Um, definitely means Soren's going to be worse too. All right, would I rather cut Soren or Golgari Queen? <clears throat> I'll trim a Paradise Druid. All right, here we go. What's up, Wrangler? Basically, the reason why I'm trimming a Paradise Druid, normally I wouldn't at all in this matchup, but the reason why I am is because we're playing Kaya's Wraths. And if we're going to, like, wait till turn four in Kaya's Wrath, then at that point, Paradise Druid has less of an impact on the game. I don't know. I don't know if we draw lands, but are we going to draw lands? Come on. We just cry. It does seem like all these, these losses, we've had a lot of losses because of our mana base and like just because of not having lands. Which is kind of surprising with our 25 land deck. Like maybe, you know, 25 lands and four Paradise Druids. You know, obviously right now we only have three, but, you know, just... In general, 25 lands, 4 Paradise Druid, and also 3 Midnight Reaper that hope you get some extra cards too. We just have so many opening hands that are just like 1 and 2 lands that just aren't going to get it done. My opponent keeps 7 cards. What are the chances that my 5... What's Like if I mulligan, what are the chances that my 5-card hand beats the 7-card hand? Is the chances of that 
better than the chance of us keeping this scrying a land to the top and curving out with like and then also drawing another land after that and curving out with like worthy knight acclaimed contenders and so on what's the higher percent chance of happening either us like draw back-to-back -back lands or us mulling to five and winning on a mull to five against the seven card hand in gruel Hmm. Alright, looks like more people say mole. Well, we're definitely keeping this. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I mean I, I've definitely won with one landers. Actually, have won with mold of five zero lander. In in standard in a top eight match. Mold of five keep zero lands on the play. Just say pass. Night Reaper can't give me more cards. That was before they changed the mulligan rules to this, like where you just looked at five and then scried. My zero lander had two flowers in it, you know, flower flourish. So I just had to draw one land and then flower flourish. Helped out. And it was against like mono red and I curved out like Thorn Lieutenant into like Shalai, into Lyra. And then they'll get in there. <sighs> All right, gonna take the high upside card with the Great Henge. Black Lance Paragon is better. They'd play like Questing Beast here. But, like, you know, it's better for, like, this next turn. But this is the high upside card. Oh, come on. Let's draw land. All right. Come on. Draw land. Land. Yeah. High upside. All right, we're kind of doing it. We're kind of doing it. Oh yeah, like we're we're definitely dying to um, Ember Cleave if they have that. Just hoping they don't. Okay, that's good. Good news. Oh no. Whoops. Oh no. 
Um. Well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we do get to do it all. I don't need green. It's either black or white. We got two white sources right now. Four black. Five black. I guess we're getting white. Go ahead. Don't flatter yourself. I mean, anything. If they had cleave last turn, they would have killed. Like Ember cleave last turn would have killed us. We're on a mold of five, and we, we were pulling ahead, but Hellkite, Hellkite Cleave did get us, but yeah. Yeah, so they top deck Cleave, because if they had Cleave last turn, that would have killed us. Well, darn. Greyhenge was pulling us, pulling us ahead, but didn't quite finish the job. Yeah, uh, great. Greyhenge just fits in the deck with all of these creatures. You know, it's not about like having a really large creature and make Greyhenge cost just a little bit of mana. It's still playing like Greyhenge is still like a five, um, you know, four, five, six mana card in this deck. Um, but it's just about playing just all these creatures and just drawing lots and lots of cards and and everything and gaining two life a turn. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. Um, I didn't think that 25 lands was going to be too little. Like, I thought that we were good with 25 lands. Uh, we did think about playing 26 lands. Originally, the person submitted the deck did have 26, and, you know, we talked about it, and we decided to go with 25. But that did seem like a, a huge problem for us was um, having enough lands. So maybe going back to 26 is the way to go. I think that the Order of Midnights didn't look... I mean, they're they're fine, but they're they're really good in like the super late game, basically. And so, like early on, it doesn't seem like something we really need a ton. And so, I think I'd want to get rid of an order of midnight for the twenty six land, and then I'd want my twenty six land to be a temple, also, so we can be a scry land to help us out. And so, I think a, a temple of scry lands. Well, I mean, I guess we did kind of struggle with green mana. So maybe just another Temple of Malady. It could just be it could just be that third Fable Passage, but I don't really like three Fable Passage and four Basics. Um, I guess Temple of Malady because. We do need like those double greens with questing beast and ceratops. We struggled with that some. <laughs> um. So yeah, so that's that's something. Rather have what a knight of the ebon legion out of the out of the sideboard? No, it's it's not really good. Knight of the Ebon Legion isn't a sideboard card. I think you either play it turn one or not. The reason why this deck doesn't really have Knight of the Ebon Legion is because it's not, it's basically never playing Knight of the Ebon Legion turn one. You know, we have what, 10 sources to play at turn one. So it would be something like turn four that we play like a three drop plus Knight of the Ebon Legion by then. But basically we're just kind of going with, with these other cards instead. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, we need the, the new Dryad. That's true. New Dryad. Help out more than Paradise Druid. But of course, it also costs three like everything else. But yeah, honestly, this deck felt pretty strong. You know, like our losses really did feel like our our lack of lands in different games contributed a lot to them. But this deck did feel really strong. I think that we we had a good ch chance, like if we had reasonable lands to win all four of those matches. Yeah, Blacklands Paragon comes in against like other opposing questing beast decks and opposing opposing aggressive decks. Like where they're attacking you, you bring you have this. Whoops, you have this in as a, a three one lifelink blocker with death touch. Like it trades with questing beast and gains you three life for two mana. It's just awesome. And you know, it's something you can grab with contender also. So it means that like against aggro, you it's basically just a removal spell against aggro, even like you know, rotting regisaur, you go block that and stuff like that. It's a removal spell against aggro that you also get to grab with acclaimed contender. I think it's a real I think it's a really smart sideboard choice. I think that was a good choice by um the person that built the deck. I think that's that's a really smart choice. Because you get to bring in removal, but you don't have to cut down on sources for contender or things that trigger worthy knight. And so on. Like if you have a worthy knight out, you know, then it's a, a two mana removal spell that gains life that also makes a one one. Which is really cool. Yeah. So, so smart, smart there. Um when do we convert to tie clipism instead of the channel pointism? Um yeah, I guess I'll have to try to try to change that if I can figure that out. Uh there we go. That's Abzan Knights. Cool deck, though. Even though we just went 2-2. Um, yeah, I think that, that just that one change of taking out an Order of Midnight for an extra land, that could have made a huge difference in a lot of those games. All right, but that's it here for Abzan Knights. So uh, you, those of y'all watching on YouTube, leave those comments. Uh, let me know about Theros. Like, what cards are you really excited about in Theros that's uh, coming up? And uh, yeah, and hit that like button over there. But thank you so much for watching some Abzan Nights, and I'll see you for the next video.